I want to call your attention today to, to a familiar passage, Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verses 28 through 30. If you would, open up your Bibles to that, or you can read it on the screen, or maybe even look at your Bible devices, your electronic devices, Bible apps. And let's read this together. Romans 8, 28. It says, and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him and who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. He did it so that Christ could be our big brother. We could be siblings in the eternal family. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. Who shall separate us? From the love of Christ. Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. For I am convinced. That neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I'll be loving you always. That's what I want to talk about today. Now, Father, honor yourself. Use us for your glory. Speak to your people. And I pray that as a result, Lord, that we would have hearts that are bigger, hearts that, Lord, more naturally respond to who you are because we welcome your love. And we pray this in Jesus' name. If you agree with the prayer, say amen. 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 Mothers love their babies in the womb. <laughs> uh, I don't know if y'all know this, but I'm about to be a grandfather. Did I say that? Did I tell y'all that yet? Uh, my daughter-in-law, Portia, is having a son. And, uh, you know, she's been loving this baby since conception. In fact, she has been loving this baby since the conception of her idea to have a baby. Every time you talk to her, you have to have a conversation, a joyful conversation about the baby and what she is going to do to care for, to protect, to lead this child that is within her womb every week. Kathy, every week we get a text about what is happening and how the baby is developing now that it's the 35th week. And then we get another one for the 36th week, another one for the 37th week. I know more about ch children developing in the womb <laughs> than, I, than I have ever thought I could know. Because she's been loving this baby since conception. Now, yesterday, uh, I found it interesting that when we had a text conversation together, uh, she was sharing with Kathy and I that she is really ready to give birth. And in order to give the baby a hint, she has been walking around the neighborhood every day. She's hoping that the baby will take a clue 
go ahead and come out into the world. But here's what she said, and I thought it was quite interesting. She said, but until then, I get to enjoy his kicks and jabs. Now, that's a whole lot of love. That, that right now, she is loving when the baby kicks and loves when the baby is punching within her womb. And she cannot wait until the day where she will be able to show him the love that she cannot show him now. And I would just imagine that once this baby is born, that she'll be loving him always. Friend, God loved us in the womb. Not, not just when we were in the womb of a woman, but he loved us in the womb of creation. He first conceived us in his mind. And he conceived you in his mind before he created the world. And so before he put stars in the sky, he was loving you. But before he created man from dust, he, he was loving you. But before there were oceans or land, he was loving you and I. He has been loving us since the dateless yesterday. Friend, God didn't just start loving us when we were born. He's been loving us for all of eternity past. All of eternity past. And, and, and what we learn from this passage, I'm not going to, I didn't read all of it, but I want to teach about most of it. What we learn is that God loves us from the eternal past. He loves you. He, he doesn't just love us in our collectiveness. He loves us individually. The text says he for new us. Everybody say for new. And, and that does not mean he just knew that we were coming. That, that does not mean that he knew uh, that uh, we would live on the planet, that he knew that we would, by his grace, be able to inhabit the space that we occupy. No, no, no. It means that he loved us before we were delivered. For, for knowledge is really for loved. He, he loved us prior to our entrance into this human plane in his sovereign imagination. Long before you and I stepped into time, God was loving us. He was loving us. He was also through not only for he not only for knew us but the bible says he predestined us so that means he made all the necessary arrangements to love us well he, he wrote all the scenes in your story he, he wrote all of the the people into your story that would be necessary to lead you to him and to demonstrate for you his love all of the people in the story, God has written them there. He was thinking about what we needed. In fact, the Bible says that in thinking about what we needed, he knew that we would need a savior. Jesus is the lamb who was slain from the foundation of the world. He loved us in the eternal yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when we were in, um, in San Antonio with Michael and Portia for Christmas, I noticed that there was a picture of the sonogram in a prominent place on the wall. And I'm thinking to myself, in my generation, we would have never placed a picture of a, a fetus on the wall. How many of you would have done that? Don't, don't, don't raise your hand because somebody in here may have done that. But we would just have never done that. Not in a prominent place. We might keep it in our bedroom. No, it was in a prominent place on the wall. And that, that tells me 
that they are joyfully anticipating the, the coming of this baby. They not only are making preparations, but they want to be reminded of it. They want to enjoy it. They, they want to bask in the privilege that God has given to them. And that's the way God says that, that I was thinking about you in the dateless past. I had a picture of you on my wall. And, and I couldn't wait in order to show you the full extent of my love. I was longing for you. I was envisioning what it is that we would do together. I don't mind you kicking and jabbing on the inside, but I want to walk with you in, in, the real, in the realness of day. So God didn't start loving us when we were born. I mean, he didn't start loving us, yes, when we were born. He, he started loving us in the womb of eternity. He'll be loving us. Always. Yeah. God, God loves you in the eternal present. Right, right now, we are not outside of eternity, but, but we're in this segment of eternity called time. And, and right now, God loves us. And he loves us in the womb of history. He, he loves us before our physical birth, amen? He, he loves us after our spiritual birth, our, after our physical birth, rather. And what he did is that he has placed in the earth everything that we need in order to survive. That, that's an indicator of his love. He causes the sun to, to shine on the just and the unjust. He causes rain to fall to provide us with vegetation and everything that we needed in order to survive. And this is a, an expression of the magnitude of his love. But now listen, after we are born, we cannot experience the full, the full measure of his love that is possible to enjoy on this earth because when we are born we don't have a relationship with God not only do we not have a relationship with God oftentimes we're not looking for a relationship with God how many of you were unsaved and unconcerned about being such yeah we, we I don't know about you but I was sinking deep in sin and having a good time didn't have a relationship with God. But the idea of having a relationship with God was confusing. I, I felt too much guilt in order to even pursue God. Would he love me? I, I feared what it would look like to walk with him. And what would the outcomes be of serving him? So when we were born... And after we began to experience life, we, we saw evidences of his kindness to us, his affection. But we were not able to see all of it until we were born again. And it's after we are born again that we experience his love in unique and personal ways. The Bible says he calls us out from the crowd. Now, this is not just a general call. This is a whole different kind of call. This is a call that we can't resist. It, it, this is a voice that other people don't hear. He doesn't call everybody like this. It really is a summons to which we must respond. This is a unique, special love for those that, that he foreknew. Then he, the Bible says he acquits us. He justifies us and he accepts us. He, he loves on us. And he engages us in personal ways. And because of that, we don't experience the same fear that we had before. We, we don't experience 
guilt like we did before. God is not uh, someone to be run who, to be run from, but to for us to run to, because we've experienced His love. Now, after we are born again, we receive the Holy Spirit. That, that's what you have received, and the Holy Spirit leads us. The Holy Spirit strengthens us. Do I have any witnesses here? The Holy Spirit uh, shows affection for us and he teaches us how to love God so much so that we call God Daddy. Abba, Father. The Spirit teaches us what it is we need to know to live life as God intended after being born again, he shows us his love. And that's what he do, he's done for you. He's demonstrated in broader measure his affection for you. You have felt heaven in your soul. Do I have anybody here who can say I'm born again? And I know I'm born again because I feel his love on the inside. Something has happened to me on the inside. I don't feel the way I used to feel. I don't do the same things that I used to do because he's moved in and his love has had a transformative impact on my life. He's leading me. He's strengthening me. And I know he loves me now. I know he loves me now. Friend, if you're walking in his love, and if you have experienced his love before, you ought to give God praise. Because not everybody gets to enjoy his love. This is only for those who are born again. Uh, God shows his love for everybody who occupies this earthly plane. But there's a unique call and a unique acquittal and a unique acceptance that belongs to those who have by faith made Jesus their leader. He loves us. What's so beautiful about his love? But even when we love him imperfectly, he still loves us perfectly. He shows us his love. Any, anybody feel his love this morning? Yeah. Everybody's not loving me right, but he loves me. <laughs> he, he loves me. He loves me. He loves you. He loves you. Somebody here, that's the whole message. Listen, he still loves you. No, no matter what's going on, no matter what's happening. No, no matter who has waved goodbye to you, God says, I'm still here. He, he loves you. He loves you. But now watch this. In our present experience, we're often tempted to doubt God's love. We may believe he loves us, but not really believe that he loves us like he loves others. And the reason why is because when life gets hard, we start questioning God's heart every now and then. The assumption is that God, if God really loved us, then he would protect us from life's harshness. He would protect us from life's despair. He would protect us from life's injustices because if he loves us, he would love us like we would want him to love us. And, and so we can, we can doubt if he's still with us. Paul tells us that no matter what our emotions say, <laughs> that, that he's still there. Our emotions are usually unwise. Friend, listen, your emotions don't know the Bible, okay? And, and, and I have to train my emotions to be in line with my faith and what it is that God says about me. Paul says, no matter what hardship 
or despair or loss that we experience in this life, the reality of God's love is still available. He's not left us. He's not dropped us. In fact, he loves us the same as he has loved us before. He loves us the same. Paul gives us seven examples of how he loves us. And that the fact, the fact that he has not dropped his love for us. Seven examples of adversity. And these are examples that are increasingly severe. He says, none of this can separate us from the love of God. Can trouble separate us? From the love of God? A hardship? The answer is no. Yeah, thank you. Nope. A persecution? Anybody ever been mistreated? Anybody ever been oppressed or being, being treated in an unjust fashion? Mm -mm. He says, no, that can't separate us. What about financial distress, famine, or nakedness? Or poverty, nothing. No, that cannot separate us. Or danger, or sword. Even if I'm in a life-threatening situation, it does not mean that God has left me. God is right there with us in all these things. He is present. He has not left us. He's still available to us. He is there. None of us, none of these rather, separate us from his love. And it makes, it makes all the sense in the world. Because he has loved us too long to leave us. <laughs> How was he loving you in the eternal past and going to drop you tomorrow because of something that you did or something somebody else did? He, he didn't do all this prearranging. This predestining in order to undo the eternal plan that he had before the creation of the world. He's been loving you too long to stop loving you now. He has given you too much to leave you. Jesus did not hang on a cross only to later leave us in a crisis. If God did not spare his own son for us, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things through hardship, give us everything we need through trouble, through nakedness, through famine, through financial distress. He is there and he is ready to give us what it is we need. He is too powerful to let someone take you from his love. He's too powerful. If God be for us, who can be against us? Nobody, no, no angelic forces, they won't take us away. No, no demonic powers, they can't take us away. If God be for us, who can be against us? He is with us and he's with us in the same measure, even though we are not experiencing him the same. Others may accuse us, but his acquittal is so binding that nobody can ever retry us. No, nobody can ever reopen the case that he closed uh, that we had before him. If God dismisses the case, who can reopen it? Nobody. Here's a quiddle. So binding. Nobody can retry you or me. So the question is, <laughs> why does God permit this trouble? Because the reality is that all of us in our humanness, every now and then, some of y'all have grown beyond this, but, but every now and then, all of us in our humanness, we wonder what God is doing. Even though we know he loves us, we wonder if he loves us the same. If we had the same access 
to him. What is God doing through all of this trouble? And here's what he's doing. He's teaching us that it's safe to love him back. He's working in us, demonstrating that even in a crisis, that Christ is there for our support. He's demonstrating that in all things, he's working and organizing and reorganizing for the purposes of bringing his plan into play in our lives. We can trust him more because he hangs on to us when others would let go of us. He wraps his arms around us uh, when others are no longer embracing us. He gives us power when we're weak in our moments of pain. He's teaching us that it's safe to love him. And friend, when I know it's safe to love him, then I rise above my fears. I have courage to face tomorrow because his love is transformative and his love is life changing. He demonstrates that we can trust him in these moments. He's standing with us when others are standing against us. And in those moments, we learn that no matter where we are, he'll be loving us. He'll be loving us always. Uh, don't, don't say anything because I don't want you to put out all of those particles, but you ought to point to somebody and say, he's loving you. Always. Aren't you glad about that? He was loving you before creation. He's loving you in time. And when all of this is gone, when everything goes back into the box, he'll still be loving you and I because he'll be loving us always. And when we know that, we, we feel safe to let his love that is within us overflow out of us to those in our world. The love of Christ, Paul says, it compels us to organically love other people once we figure out in our souls that God is love, it is easy to find courage to love somebody else. If you find courage in love, you ought to give him praise right now. And friend, that's what God is saying to somebody. The, the reason why I hide is because I'm not complete in his love. The, the reason why I tend to be afraid in, of others is that I'm not complete in his love because perfect love, it casts out fear. So he loves me. He, he loves you in, in the eternal past. He loves us in this eternal present. But, but I like what Paul says. He says through all of this, he's also pointing us to an eternal future. What, what trouble is teaching us is that we've got to look to something beyond this life <laughs> to find what it is that we have been looking for. Aren't you glad that God blesses us in this life? Aren't you glad that God gives us unique privileges in this life? How many of you can say God has brought you from a long a long way. But, but at the same time, everything that we need cannot be obtained in this life. And what the Apostle Paul says is that when we go through trouble, it, it's like the pains of birth. The, the trouble is telling us that we've got to enter into another dimension. The, the trouble is telling us that there's something beyond this womb of time that God is trying to pull us into. So when you go through trouble, you experience despair. 
God says, those are just contractions. You're feeling the pain of imperfect humanity. You're feeling the groans that come from being in a place that is still filled with unlove. And so he says, I want to give birth to you on the other side. Friend, there's another birth. It is eternal birth. And God says, you can trust me with that. You can trust me with that. Uh, my, 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 uh, my daughter-in-law, my son, they took us in this room. And I don't know, you may have done this before. They took us in this room where the baby is going to be. Listen, everything. Freshly painted. Months ago. <laughs> All the pictures on the wall. The crib is sturdy. I mean, it looked like it was like $5,000 crib. All of the blankets, all of the stuffed animals are in the crib. There's, a, there's a, a rocking chair in the corner so that they can rock the baby asleep. There's a monitor, a sound monitor where if they are in the other room, they can hear the baby. And then there are months worth of diapers, not only in the room, but all over the house because... They are preparing for the delivery of this baby. And God says, I, I know you're having birth pains while you're going through trouble. He says, I've already anticipated it and I've gotten everything ready for you to come to the other side. I got your room ready and I've got paintings on the wall that you would like I've got your bed and your linens I've got everything that you need for all of eternity and you will not want any more the Lord is my shepherd and I'll understand that verse eternally on the other side that I shall not want it's birth pains pointing me to another place and in that place there's perfection there's no more trouble you ought to help me close this thing no more hardship no more injustice no more unkindness no more sickness because God is going to show off all of his love for us in this perfect environment and so I am convinced that neither death nor life neither angels nor demons neither the present nor the future nor any powers neither height nor death nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate you from the love of God that you found in Christ Jesus your Lord because he'll be loving you always everything is prepared and he'll be loving you he'll be loving you until the rainbow burns the stars out in the sky until the ocean covers every mountain high until the dolphin flies and the parrots live at sea until we dream of life and life becomes a dream he'll be loving you always of the love of God run to his love move toward his love understand the depth the height the length and the width of the love of God in Christ Jesus
He's safe to love. Because he loves you always. Always. His love does not dissipate with time. Always. Broken. Always. Failed. Always. Anybody ever messed up? But you found out that God loved you? No. Yeah, he loves you always. And, in, and listen, in, in trials, the question is not whether or not he loves us. The, the question is, have we learned how to love him? That's what he is. He's teaching us how to love him. How to love him. Without all the props of safety. Come on, everybody stand to your feet all over the building. If you're here today, and never accepted the Lord Jesus, but you want to today. You, you hear him inviting you. Listen, you, you don't have to try harder. Um, you don't have to try to fix yourself. You don't have to do your own home improvement. What is, what is Home Depot's motto? Uh, you can do it and we can help. You can't do this. You need, you need his help. And he says, I'm more than willing to give it to you. And so if you never accepted the Lord Jesus, I want you to do that today. I want you to make him your leader today. I want you to start over with him today. And know a broader expression, a fuller expression of his love in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the way we're going to do this today is we're not going to have the invitation in room 159. What we want you to do is that we want you to call the number on the screen. And our spiritual decision team, they are ready right now. Right now, they're ready to receive your call, share with you how you can come to know Jesus. And then for those of you who already know Jesus, but you want to be a part of this family of faith. You want to be a part of Greater Mount Zion. You've been checking us out. You like the way we roll? You understand what's going on when you come? You feel the love of God? Come on, man. Come on, my sister. Let's go ahead and do this now. Don't we look good? Don't you like us? <laughs> I got I to be careful because, you know, sometimes people like fade in and out of the conversation. I'm not talking about myself. I'm talking about him and what he's doing in this body. And so if you would, call this number. They can tell you how you can join this family of faith. And we begin and we can begin to enjoy his love together. Well, aren't you glad you came to church today?